Hello and welcome to Python Fundamentals. In this course, we learn the underpinning Python programming skills, preparing for our journey towards mastering the Django framework and the Python programming language. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials. You can find the link to the whole playlist in the video description. This tutorial is from our Python Programming Fundamentals for Django Developers course, which you can find and purchase on Udemy. You will find all the latest and updated tutorials, as well as resources and assessments to help accelerate your learning of the subject. The link to the course, which will always provide the best price, can be found in the video description. When you make changes to your Django models, you will need to tell the database that an update has been created and therefore you need to apply those updates to the database. So let's take a look at how we can tell our database that we have changed our Django models. The database schema here refers to our database, the structure of our existing database maybe, or the database that we want to create. So we start off with no database at all. Now, because we have been through this process before, although not formally, you may already have some different artifacts and files that exist that we need to delete first. So just to ensure that everyone is on the same page here, what I've done is I've gone ahead and deleted the database that was here. So if you do have a database, let's see if we can bring this in focus. If you do have a database, it's going to be called db.sqlite. So just make sure you get rid of that, delete that. And in addition to that, if you have been playing around inside of your application new app here, if you are following this or your app, whatever you've called it, inside of migrations, when we apply a migration, when we actually make a change to our database, you can see a new file is created, 001 and so on. You're going to need to make sure if you want to install or change or create a new database, you're going to need to delete this initial migration to begin with. So just get rid of that. Make sure you delete this file only and you don't delete the init file here or the cache file. So don't remove those. Right. So that brings us back to the start. Here is the table that we want to migrate, that we want to build. Remember, we don't have a database at this point. So we want to build this build a new database and then build this table within our database. Now we don't generally define a database that would just by default at least automatically get generated. We're simply just defining the tables within our database and that's what this Django model represents. So in order to actually build a new table, if you're on Windows, pi, if you're on the Mac, dot slash and then manage.py and then let's go ahead and create or make migrations. So what we're doing first is we're building a file which has instructions for Django to then translate and then send in a way to the database so that it can then build these this table called customer and also then these fields inside of that table. We can inspect the file that we just made. So in migrations, we now have this new file. We can actually build this manually if we wanted to. Uh, and you can see inside of here, there's general reference to the fact that we want to build a new table called customer. That's the name. Notice that we specify the fields here. Now, what you will see is if you haven't specified your own primary key, you can see that there's an additional field that is going to be added. Apologies. Let's just uh, bring that down. There's an additional field here that's going to be built, and that's an ID field. That's going to be your primary key. Notice that it's using the big auto field. I did explain very briefly auto fields in the previous tutorial. So this is a field that's going to auto increment a number from one up until whatever number you have, which represents the data that's stored in each row of your table. So you can see that it's going to be building the name, age and mobile as we expect. And you can also see the other parameters that we've defined, the field type, and then in this case, some other preferences. So this is just step one. At this point, we haven't build, built the table. So now we're going to need to go back into the command prompt here. And this time we're going to need to run the managed.py and then we're going to need to run migrate. 
If this is the first time you've migrated, you will find that there are other tables that is created. And that's all generated, as I've explained before, in the settings here. Notice that when we create a new Django project by default, Django also includes these other apps, if you like. So there's other functionality that we may or may not need to run our Django application. Right, so let's run manage.py and then migrate. So this time what's happening is it's taken that migration file, it's now applying that to the database. And we now have the new table created. Now by default, Django is utilizing the SQLite database technologies. So we just build a file type of database. So this is just one file and that is then storing our database. Now we can't by default view the data inside of this file. So we are going to need an additional extension, which is going to help us view the data inside of that table. Right, so let's go over to extensions. And then what you're looking for is SQLite. So just type in SQLite at the top here. That would take you to this, this extension here. Just install this extension and that sh extension should then be available to use within Visual Studio Code. Right, so I've got this installed. So what we can do now do, let's go back to the Explorer at the top here. Let's go into right click my database and open the database. Now at the bottom here, you can see it says SQLite Explorer. So just uh, click on that and you can now see we have this database here. Now if I use a drop down here, these are all the tables that are inside my database. So I can now go to my new database. Now what's happened here, when the database is created, Django will use the app name, new app, an underscore, and then the table name, which is customer. So this is my table here that was created, as well as all these other tables that was created. So if I right click, well actually, if I just bring that up, you can first of all, you can see all the different fields inside of my table here. If I right click show table, it will then appear and any data that I have in my database will appear here. Now remember, if you want to reset all of this, first of all, excuse me, first of all, you need to delete the file dbsqlite3. And then secondly, you need to go to migrations and delete the initial migration file or any other migration file you might have. Remembering not to delete the init file here or the cache file. Any changes that you want to make. So let's imagine now that we want to make a change. All that we need to do is go into our table here uh, let's go ahead and let's just change the max length maybe back down to 10. Maybe we've changed our mind or maybe we've added a new field. So once we've made a change, we just need to run the commands again. Make migrations and you can see that we are going to make a change here and then we need to run migrate again. And this time you can see we now have a second migration file here and our table would have been updated. So those are the basic underpinning skills of updating and changing the database schema. Remember, re referring here to the database schema as the actual, all the tables and all the fields that are defined in the actual database that we built. That's what I'm referring to as database schema. So when we want to make changes, we update our Django models, make the migrations, and then that updates the database schema within our database.